The next aspect that I wanted to look at uh, if this had completed was to look at some data files and see what data we actually got. Now, I, in preparation for this, uh, did create some data files. You can see I have them here with some with some nice peaks. Uh, they already have uh, all of the peak names. Uh, if I was going to do some work with these, I maybe wouldn't have any peaks identified. I could initialize from my chromatogram. I'm allowed to add peaks. I can give it what the, the peak name is, and uh, give it what the, the retention time is. Uh, come on, there we go, 1.1 minutes. Uh, I can also select whether this peak will be calibrated as part of my uh, calibration curve, or maybe it's just a peak that I measure in some other way where I don't actually use a calibration. So you can select which peaks are going to be calibrated and which peaks are not. Um, when you select them in this column here, in this calibration column, uh, they will then show up in your calibration screen. Now, you can see I've got quite a lot of data uh, on the screen at the moment. One handy little feature is normally when I'm editing this, I wouldn't need my chromatogram to also be showing. So there's a handy little button, which is not always obvious uh, at this point here. And if I just press that, my chromatogram is then hidden and I can see my calibration data with no difficulty. And that works uh, in quite a few places. If I go to my results screen, you can see that it is missing my chromatogram. I can just press that button to get it back again. Uh, quite, quite a handy little feature that lets you control uh, what's going on with, uh, with what you're doing. So we, we have our peaks, we have our, our calibration data. So I have, a, have already populated these so that uh, we can create a, a calibration curve today. I did anticipate that my, my system wouldn't work for some reason uh, and did actually prepare these uh, a little bit ahead of time. You can see from the chromatogram I actually, or from the, the data file, I have uh, two internal standards. I can select uh, which peak is going to be my internal standard. And I can also select for every other peak, which internal standard I intend to use for that one. You are allowed almost as many as you like internal standards so that they can be uh, associated with the peak of interest uh, to ensure that you get the best match uh, in terms of performance and response from the GC uh, to, to do your internal standard calculation. If we look at uh, some of the other features on the screen here, we have different types of calibration available. We can do uh, just straightforward area percent or response percent. We can normalize everything. Uh, we, when we normalize, we not only have that choice, we can choose to normalize to some other value other than 100%. I'm not quite sure, but I, that's not true. I can think of a couple of situations where, where that, would, that would be helpful. Uh, maybe you don't get a full recovery from the column and you want to only normalize what's actually alluded rather than to 100%, which may be a, a better reflection on what your results might be. Um, we have an external standard, which, as its name suggests, means you have no internal peaks that you're doing a calculation against. And uh, finally, internal standard. We have a few other uh, calibration types that uh, can be available. Uh, they take a little more effort. They are not the sort of standard types that you that you would normally see. The one I'm thinking of is, is standard addition. Uh, we certainly have a have a procedure uh, that allows you to set that up within your method, so that each time you you run the method, your standard addition is actually uh, calculated. Each uh, calibration curve that you create exists as a separate file. Uh, we do not include the calibration file, in, well, we, we include it inside the method and we include it inside the data file, but it is a standalone file that you can associate with other methods or with other data files. Um, to choose another calibration curve, you can just press open and select which one 
you would like to use uh, for this particular data file. So it allows you the ability to uh, create a calibration curve with one set of data files and then use that calibration curve in a different method or in a diff for a different set of files. A very useful feature and means that the calibration curve is actually independent of uh, the, the data that you use, the data that you was used to create it. If we move on a little bit, um, when we when we look at our chromatogram, we may want to change what we can see and uh, what it looks like. Uh, maybe we don't like what the peak names look like. Maybe we want them to be a little bit different. So there's there's a couple of ways uh, that we can do that. We can do it within from within the method. We have this section called formats, and in formats you can see what my chromatogram format will look like, what my peak report might look like. Uh, so if we if we concentrate on the chromatogram format, I can choose edit in there, and uh, I'm allowed to change uh, quite quite a few things. I can change what the peak annotations are. Maybe uh, I would like them to be a different a different font, or maybe a bigger font. Let's just do a bigger font just to just to see. So if I say okay, you can. And then OK, you can see they get much larger. Um, I not only have to, to, to do it from within there, I can also do it from my from my chromatogram. If I just right click on my chromatogram, I can choose properties and it will take me to the same screen and allow me to, to change any of these things. Uh, I have some options. I can have it be oblique or I can have it to be horizontal. I can change what my uh, line looks like, I can change what the thickness looks like, what the style is. Lots of customization is possible in what your chromatogram looks like on the screen. Not only that, once you have once you have done that, once you have made these changes and you get it on the screen, yeah, that's what I want my ch chromatogram to look like. Um, using the, the formats function, I can then just save that to a library. Um, I can save the current format. It will ask me to give it a name, and I can then apply that same format to uh, my report style or in other places that uh, you may want to see a, a visible uh, or, a, or the, the chromatogram is actually visible. The other place that, or the other thing that I should mention when we're in here is we have uh, what's called the, the peak report. So. Just now we can't see the peak report on the screen, so let's go go to that. So my peak report at the moment looks like this. Uh, so I have my peak names, I have the retention time, what my calculated quantity might be, height, area, area percent. Maybe these are things that I want, or or maybe they're not. Uh, I could use my format section again uh, to to control that, or again I can just Press a right click and choose report properties, and I can select what things I, I maybe want in my report. Maybe I'm I'm not so interested in what the height is. Maybe the the area in uh, volts per minute is is not what I'm interested in. Maybe I want it to be the area in microvolts per second. So I can just select from the list. Uh, I probably do want the area percent. Maybe I want to look at the asymmetry of some of my peaks, so I could add that to the table, or maybe I want to look at my peak width, or any one of a long list of different parameters that would be associated with an individual peak uh, in any chromatogram. Uh, you know, maybe the the number of theoretical plates. You can one of the things about this list is. You can see well what what does that mean what what does what does that description mean it's, it's quite difficult to to understand left half width uh, sixty to to seven percent or what, what does that mean well handily within compass we do actually describe underneath exactly what that means and what we're going to do about it uh, internal standard uh, manual RF this variable is true. So it tells you what they are going to do and what effect that is going to have on the peak chromatogram or the peak result that you get. 
So yeah, I probably did actually want to change those. Let me just uh, make make some modifications. Uh, so I wanted that to be removed. I wanted that to be added, and we'll maybe look at what the what the asymmetry looks like. So I've made these I've made these changes, and they instantly appear on my peak report. Okay, um, and what I see here is basically what I will see in my printed report. Uh, so I can go and have a go and have a quick look at that just by pressing that button. Yeah, you can see the writing is quite big. You can see I've got a couple of other things on there too. Uh, I see we've still got some people uh, waiting in the lobby, uh, so I can't actually get to the button. My apologies, I can't actually get to the button on my screen. Uh, because of that, so bear with me, and we'll let a few more participants in. So we've looked at uh, a, a few of the different things that are in here. Uh, we've looked at uh, how we can populate this quite quickly just by doing initialize from chromatogram and then up updating. Uh, we can copy individual peaks. We can delete peaks. We probably want to delete this extra one that we created, so I'm allowed to just delete selection. Did that not happen? Let's try that again. Delete selection. Okay, and it does ask you for a for a confirmation. You also have this thing called groups. Now there, there are occasions where you want uh, you want to provide a a result for a group of peaks. Uh, and that's very straightforward to do. We want a result group. We can then select what we are going to get. You can see there are two tabs at the top here. We can select whether we want just to add individual peaks. So I could say, right, I want to add uh, peak six, peak seven, and peak eight. No, oh, I picked five. Okay, we, we wanted eight. Remove and add peak eight. So that will now appear as a, as a result group. And if I go and look at my results, I won't see it just quite yet, because although I've told it that's something I want to do, it hasn't actually calculated it. How I could get it to calculate it would be either to reprocess the chromatogram or uh, just do a simple integration. So we have just a, an integrate button. What the integrate button is, does is calculate the results, but it doesn't execute any additional commands. It doesn't execute that uh, maybe I have a plugin or maybe I do something else uh, with with the data file. It only does the sums, if you like. And you can see for for those three peaks, um, I have I now have a result. Maybe I want to give that a, a bit better name, so I could go back to my group identification and call it uh, I don't know uh, peak. Uh, five, six, and seven. I chose six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, and eight. And once I've entered that again, I can oh, cancel. Uh, I can then just reprocess that, and it should update into my group report. Okay, so you can very quickly build up a method, change change what that method looks like, change what that method does. Uh, there are a, a few more few more things down here that we don't really have time to do today. Uh, so the the last one that I'm going to look at on this list uh, for the moment uh, will be what the report looks like, what that actually comes out to to be, and and how it would uh, and how it would uh, look for your finished report. So I have this default standard. I can I can edit my report. Um, you can see I've, I've edited it in the past, where I've added uh, maybe the, the customer's logo to the report. So this is the the report template, and it's a, it's in a style of uh, what's called as what you see is what you get. So if you can uh, envision this this uh, screen that you can see as your page uh, or as your piece of paper, what you see on here is the various sections that will appear on your piece of paper. Um, adding and removing sections is, is very straightforward. Um, so I, I have this uh, additional chromatogram here. I can just remove that. Maybe I want to add 
uh, the, the group results that I created a bit earlier. I can just click the button and then drop them on the page, uh, make them just a little bit wider. If I then uh, save my report, I can close that one and I can then see what that would look like as my new as my new result. So there is my my peak result and there is my group result. I'll zoom in on those just so you can you can actually see them. Okay, so again it's a it's a very quick editing tool. You can do you can get quite a professional uh, looking report quite quickly just by dragging and dropping uh, a few items from from the menu bar. Um, we have most of the sections available. You can have just labels. You can have uh, text boxes. You are, of course, allowed pictures. You're allowed tables. And uh, from within Compass, we have a, a long list of different things you can add. Uh, maybe you want the, the method in there, or maybe you want uh, the calibration curve, or maybe the system suitability report, the electronic signatures. Most of the sections or all of the sections that you are likely to need can be created within this report editor. If we move on a, a little bit, uh, the, the next thing I would like to, to look at would be to, to create a calibration curve uh, from, the, from the data files that I've, I've collected. Now, you could update all of the things that you have changed in here, so all of the things that you have added. Uh, you can update those to the data collection method uh, simply by pressing update method. All of the things you've changed, all of the things that you've added to, to make this a useful method for your purposes, then go back into the global method. And every time you run that method for an analysis, the formatting and the reporting and the additional functionality that you, that you, that you want uh, goes into the data file every time. So with that in mind, I'll just close this chromatogram. I'm going to say no uh, to, to save all of those changes for the moment. If I, so one of the ways I could do that is to simply run my method multiple times and it would create my calibration curve. That would be a, a way that I could go about it. Um, that certainly works and it definitely is a way, of, a way of operating. Quite often what happens in that situation though is uh, you do your analysis and for some reason one of the standards goes wrong. Um, one of the standards is out of tolerance or something happens. And uh, what quite a few uh, customers do is they basically just run everything as an unknown. Okay, They just run all the samples and then they come back and they reprocess the samples after they have reviewed what the data looks like. So for, for my particular case, um, I could maybe open up my, my list of chromatogram standards, if I can get the, the mouse to roll over the part I want. Uh, I can open the chromatogram. You can see I have my uh, various levels uh, already already built. So level one, two, three, four, and five. And I can select all of those uh, just by pressing the shift key, selecting the first one, selecting the last one, and it will open all of these data files for me. And you can see that my my calibration might look quite good. It might be it might be not too bad. Um, if I if I zoom in on one of my peaks, so I can zoom in on any particular peak just by uh, clicking and and right swiping. Uh, so yeah, my 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 peaks look quite nice. There's not not much I can go wrong with there. So I I would want to process these to become my calibration curve. So Again, I can I open them quickly. There is a way to close them quickly. If I choose this close method or close chromatogram button, it shows me the list of open chromatograms. I can select them all, or I can just select the ones that I want to close, uh, and then press the OK button. The next thing that I would want to do would be to, to build a, a simple sequence. So I could do file, sorry, a simple reprocessing list. So I could do new reprocessing list. How many lines do I want? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I created a sequence to, to do my injections. Uh, so maybe I have a, uh, well, I, I don't have a sequence. So, oh, well, I have to create a new one. 
So we'll say five lines. I know I have five levels uh, in my standard. I maybe have a, a couple of data files as well. So let's uh, add another three onto that, and we'll have uh, eight lines. Um, again, we'll just give it today's date. Just to get this going. Now, again, to, to add uh, chromatograms to this, it, is, it can be quite quick. So I can select the file that I want just by pressing this button. And I can then select a, a list of files. And what it will do is automatically populate the reprocessing list with that list of files. Now, I'll select all of those. I don't want to take that one, though, because I'm not sure what that one is. The rest of them I know uh, are my calibration curve and then my unknowns associated with it. And you can see that brings up my curve. Um, and because I have run these data files in the correct way before, uh, it automatically populates what are standards and what are unknowns. So supposing it didn't do that, uh, Let's let's see it, it just came up as all unknown just to just to go through the process. So we can fill the block and say OK. And you can see these are now all set as unknowns. And if I run uh, this this sample list or this reprocessing list, it would simply calculate that against the, the calibration curve. But uh, what we want to show here is how quickly we could maybe rebuild this as the the reprocessing list that I actually want. So I could select the first one as my standard because I know that's my level one data. And what I want it to do is I want it to clear the old points. So I want it to completely delete my existing calibration curve and create a fresh new one. This is my level one standard. Uh, now to I could just go down the next one and add that one and the next one and add that one. But uh, that's fine when you only have four or five. When you have a long list, uh, that becomes a little more problematic. So what I can do is, I don't know if you noticed, when I moved my mouse, it sort of went from a, a left pointing mouse to a, or a left pointing pointer to a right pointing pointer. And when it does that, it allows me to just select items on this list. Okay, and you can see I've only selected the first few. And if I then right click in here, I can choose fill block and it will update all of the ones that I've highlighted, but only those and the others uh, remain unchanged. Okay, and similarly, I could I could do this in here, where I can choose uh, fill block by right clicking, and on this occasion, it gives me an increment because you're unlikely to want to copy the calibration level all the way down. You can certainly get it to do that. Uh, one of the ways you can get it to do that is by making the increment be zero. And if you make the increment zero, you can see my calibration level becomes one all the way down. It's not actually what I want. So I can choose fill block. I want a one increment and it will add that to my list. Um, if we look at some of the other features just on the, on the left hand side here before we move on, we can select which channel. Maybe your GC has multiple channels. You have one, two, three, four detectors. Uh, selecting which channel this is going to affect. Uh, you can also change which method you use. One of the things I mentioned earlier was the, the method that I used to create my data and create my calibration curve was, or create my data was different from the one that I used for my calibration curve. So I have this calibration curve method that has all of my parameters in it. Um, I can select which one I use uh, to create the curve and then select which methods will, will use that curve. Um, so having it as a standalone file does make it a very flexible choice. Um, the other things that I might have, uh, because I have an internal standard method, you can see I need to enter what my internal standards might be. In this case, I've set them both to one, but those would normally be your actual internal standard weights um, for the particular compounds that you're interested in. Uh, 
We also have a thing called user inputs, which is maybe any additional variables that you've added uh, to the method. You can change those here as well. Uh, this, this screen is identical to the screen that you would see when making injections. So for my reprocessing list, I basically built it uh, from scratch. Hasn't taken very long to run it uh, because it's quite a quick method. I can uh, just run it quite quickly, say yes. And as you can see, it can get through the reprocessing list quite quickly. I could then go and review my data and see uh, whether this will work. Maybe the first thing I should go do would be to have a look at my calibration curve. So here's my today calibration curve. Open that one. Oh, something's gone wrong with one of my points. You can see it's something just not quite right there. If that happened in, in my real live data, it would be possible just to remove that point. And there I have my, my nice calibration curve. You would have to investigate why that point is is out of is out of where it's supposed to be. Um, maybe yeah, something's gone wrong with with that sample uh, with the with the high level sample. There's clearly something not right with the calibration levels and all of that. So it, you could just disregard it, or you could rerun the sample or see uh, what other solutions there might be to to solve that particular problem. Now, the last thing that I would maybe want to look at today would be um, how could I review all of these data files in, in one place, uh, creating what, what we call a, a summary report, where instead of having to go to each individual sample, uh, I could open each individual chromatogram uh, and, and have a look and see what the what they all look like. So there we are. Uh, my internal standards look remarkably good. They are all very well overlaid. But uh, some of my peaks, you can see the areas have varied a little bit. So there will be uh, some deviation from what the actual result is. That would be something that I would want to see. The percentage RSD is a very important. Uh, number when carrying out analysis to get some sort of idea of the certainty uh, for your sample. You know, how sure are you that this sample is actually what you see it is? How we could do that? I think I already have a, a summary report that I created. Oh, no, I don't have one. Okay, we could create quickly create a summary report just to just to see what that looks like. So we could do new, new summary report. We want to add our chromatograms. So our chromatograms are down the bottom here. There we go. So you're interested in these chromatograms. Say open. We also need uh, a method to process these with. So I'll choose my cal curve method. Say open. And it then says, okay, which which one, which uh, which detector? So I want that detector, and then add a variable. We are interested in either of the area. So we could do area per second to look at the at the raw peak data, or if you wanted to look at the internal standard data, so the calculated data, then you would maybe choose quantity because the area only shows you what the actual area was, and the quantity is the calculated against what the internal standard might be. Um, I'll, I'll choose only one at the moment, so maybe uh, choosing the internal standard would be, would be a better choice, or choosing the calculated amount would be a better choice. Uh, and say OK. Um, it takes a moment just to, just to populate that. I would then want to see all of my peaks. So I will choose 10 because I have 10 peaks. And I can then quickly see what that looks like. So if I just make that full screen, and there you can see what my 
RSDs might look like and what my result is for every single peak that I have on my list. You can see the standard deviation. It also gives you the control charts for each of those uh, peaks. So you can see what the variation looks like. Maybe there are some trends in the data. Maybe it's trending down or trending up. Again, it would allow you to see that uh, quite quickly. Uh, you could add, so I'll say yes to save that summary report. Um, again, we'll give it just today's date. Uh, just to save it in there. If I wanted to add that uh, or add each data file that I create to my summary report, that is something that is very straightforward to do in the method file. You can choose add and then select the summary report that you're going to use. And when that's saved back to the method, every time you run the method, the results from that method will be added to the summary report. And that way, you simply open the summary report. You don't even need to edit it or change it, and it will show you the, the current data for uh, that batch of samples. That's basically all I have uh, for today. Um, I'm sure you have uh, some questions as to other features and other functions that Compass might be able to do. Uh, this was literally just a, a whistle-stop tour of uh, all the different things that are there and the versatility and how the workflows can be very quick uh, to actually deliver results and reports uh, very fast for your laboratory and to get the results that you need. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm sure there will be uh, some questions. Let me just minimize that one and uh, stop sharing my screen. I will then be able to uh, see the, the participants and uh, what the questions there, there might have been. So is there anybody got any questions? I'm not seeing any in chat. No, no questions. I will take uh, verbal questions if you don't want to type anything. No, nobody. No, there we go. There we go. Some Q and A. Sorry, I'm having a lot of difficulty in actually scrolling down in the Q and A. Let me just get it. On the internal standard calibration, is there any way to specify a standard weight? Yes, there is. Um, you can uh, specify that uh, in two different places. Uh, you can either do it. Well, you, you can do it in here, where you can specify what the actual weight is. You can do that up front in the method. You can do it in the data file. Um, you can also add it as part of your uh, sequence. So the, the peak generator uh, is a standard function that is available uh, on the DVD. Uh, I think I have a version of the DVD. I can show you that on here. Uh, so if I go to my documents folder, uh, I have a copy of, so this would be the contents of the, the normal DVD that you would see. Uh, so if you look on it, it has all of these files. If you look in the, ah, sorry, I need to share my screen again. I had assumed I was still sharing. Uh, so if I just share that screen again, just to let you see. So what I did was uh, browse to the DVD. You can see all of the DVD files there. If you go to drivers and then scroll down until you see internal drivers, if you install that internal drivers, that will allow you to have the uh, peak generator that may be useful in some situations for you. Uh, any other questions? Any anything else anybody would like to 
would like to know or like to see uh, before we finish up for today? No. Chrome sync. Uh, so. Hang on till we get to the chat. So people are starting putting things in the chat. Bear with me. Uh, yes, you can take a snapshot. Uh, so the, the snapshot feature, I unfortunately couldn't get to work today or it didn't work today because my, my acquisition method didn't work. So if I was doing a quick start, uh, if I can get it to, to do something today, uh, just say start. Let's see if we can get it to work this time. I suspect it won't. Uh, so there is a, a snapshot feature that will allow you to see what uh, what uh, peaks have actually emerged, and then grab uh, what they are. So uh, you can see it's it's trying to cool my injector because my method has a as a setting of 50 degrees, but normally you would just press this button here. It will take a snapshot and then open the data file uh, showing the peaks that have already alluded and what the results for each of those might be. Uh, Chrome Sync, Chrome Sync I will deal with uh, in a later uh, edition of these webinars and um, where I'll talk about all of the different features and functions that uh, can be used as plugins and different things that we can do. Uh, is there any others uh, in the chat or any more in the in, in the Q and A? Yes, I think I've answered all of those. Is there a way to specify standard weight? Yeah, and somebody realised I wasn't sharing my screen. Unfortunately, I couldn't see the chat when I was presenting. Um, Is the software compatible with data from other company machines like Agilent? Yes, it certainly is. Uh, you can use a feature called uh, import data where uh, from the other CDS, you can export in various formats. You can export as an AIA or as uh, XY data or uh, some other uh, types uh, from within Compass. You can then, uh, I'll just share my screen. That one uh, from within Compass, you can then do a file open, and if you choose open chromatogram, uh, you will be able to see the the other file types uh, actually in here. You can simply select them, and uh, they will open and import uh, automatically. Uh, alternatively, you can choose import, and you can import ASCII files, uh, which would be XY data. That you could import and then manipulate uh, those chromatograms. Let me see if I can see any any other chat on here. Okay, no, nothing else in the chat. Uh, does it allow MS data? Uh, no, unfortunately, uh, MS data is not available within Compass CDS. You would have to use MS Workstation for that. Any other any other questions? Anything anybody's not sure of, or you want me to demonstrate today? How is the element integration event in the report style? So you can control what that looks like either using uh, the formats section. So whether there are peak annotations and uh, what they might look like. So integration on, integration off, whatever the, uh, whatever the integration event feature is, you can control exactly what that looks like. Um, you can see what it would look like on my screen, uh, which is this blue marker that is shown here. Uh, if I go and switch on uh, some more uh, integration events, so I'll put something uh, a little bit later on in the run, uh, maybe at, uh, point 0.5, that will automatically show up instantly on the screen. Any other 
Any other questions? Anything else you would like me to show? No. Uh, if we are all done, thank you very much indeed for attending today. Uh, uh, apologies for the little bit of shaky start at the beginning. That uh, did phase me just a little. But uh, I think we got to see quite a lot of features and quite a lot of functions that are within uh, Compass. So certainly still worthwhile. I think we covered quite a lot of things in, in the time allowed. Uh, we've got some more Q&A. Let's just scroll down to the Q&A. Uh, and tele update uh, again, that's something I'll show in a, in a later webinar. Uh, we need some support for GCMS SCI on 451. Uh, if you contact me uh, by email, I'm more than happy to, to try and help you with your 451 uh, GCMS. That will be no problem. Okay, any more? No, people are starting to leave. Thank you.